What's up, everybody? Welcome to Building Our Power. This is Gabby. KT is not here today. I'm flying solo. You can hit us up at Building Our PWR. Hit KT up at KT Does Art. Hit me up at Gabby's Music. Housekeeping. If you'd like to donate to the redistribution of funds, the educating of the community, the feeding of our local community, you can do so. Link is in the description. Thank you so much to whoever that was that sent us 10 bucks uh, this week. We appreciate it. Um, we're also thinking and formulating some new propaganda flyers to post uh, around the city. If we come up with some real dope, we will definitely uh, link y'all to some templates for y'all to make your own. And I think that's it on housekeeping. All right, let's get into it. We're going to be continuing our reading and discussion of The Principles of Anarchism by Lucy Parsons. So where we were leaving off, uh, she was pretty much talking about how people uh, want to convince you that uh, an anarchist way of life uh, is impossible as a dream. But we've been living this way longer than we've been in capitalism. So... How was that a dream? If anything, capitalism was a dream. Um, So uh, let's get back into it. From the dark years not so long gone by, when it was generally believed that man's soul was totally depraved and every human impulse bad, when every action, every thought, and every emotion was controlled and restricted, when the human frame, diseased, was bled, dosed, suffocated and kept as far from nature's remedies as possible when the mind was seized upon and distorted before it had time to evolve a natural thought from those days to these years the progress of this idea has been swift and steady it is becoming more and more apparent that in every way we are quote governed best when we are governed least Still unsatisfied, satisfied, perhaps, the inquirer seeks for details, for ways and means, and whys and wherefores. How will we go on like human beings, eating and sleeping, working and loving, exchanging and dealing without the government? So used have we become to, quote, organized authority in every department of life that ordinarily we cannot conceive of the most commonplace avocations being carried on without the interference and, quote, protection but anarchism is not compelled to outline a complete organization of a free society to do so with any assumption of authority would be to place another barrier in the way of coming generations the best thought of today may become useless vagary of tomorrow and to crystallize it into a creed is to make it unwieldy okay so pretty much what he's saying with this is Pretty much going on to the fact that um, it, it it all goes back to what we were talking about. We did that episode about human nature and how uh, Protestant Christianity or just Christianity in general or Western religion has taught that human beings are depraved and evil and can't do nothing by themselves when really that was all an excuse for the church to have more authority and power over people to take their money and, and that was tied in with the kings and, and and for people to comply with them. Like it was all a scheme to keep that hierarchy going. And then with the second part, her talking about, you know, people, of course, they want solutions. So they're going to say, how is this going to be done? What is it going to look like? What does the anarchist society look like? And she's like, I can do, come up with theoreticals all day. But ultimately, it's, it's just because I think it would work like this today does not mean it will work like this tomorrow. And I think that's a good way to view things. Like, unless you're in it, you can come up with ideas on how to get there. But unless you're in it, you're just talking just to talk because Lucy Parsons in the 30s and 40s could have had this grand scheme idea of how an anarchist society would look. But she couldn't foresee uh, technology, the internet. She couldn't foresee the pandemic. Like, there's all types of things. So that's why, as she was talking about in the last episode, Anarchism is ever evolving. It's it's not some strict thing of we must go this way for it to be anarchism. We must follow this way. The only the only main principle of anarchism is what she said. We are governed best when we are governed least. All right, let's get back into it. We judge from experience that man 
is a gregarious animal and instinctively affiliates with his kind, cooperates, unites in groups, works to better advantage combined with his fellow man than when alone. This will point to the formation of cooperative communities, of which our present trade unions are embryonic patterns. Each branch of industry will no doubt have its own organization, regulations, leaders, etc. It will institute direct methods of communication with every member of that industrial branch in the world and establish equitable relations with all other branches. There will probably be conventions of industry which delegates would attend and where they would transact such business as was necessary, adjourn, and from that moment be delegates no longer, but simply members of a group. To remain permanent members of a continuous Congress would be to establish a power that is certain sooner or later to be abused. No great central power like a Congress consisting of men who know nothing of their constituents' trades, interests, rights, or duties would be over the various organizations or groups. Nor would they employ sheriffs, policemen, courts, or jailers to enforce the conclusions arrived at while in session. The members of groups might profit by the knowledge gained through mutual exchange of thought afforded by conventions if they choose, but they will not be compelled to do so by any outside force. Vested rights, privileges, charters, title deeds upheld by all the paraphernalia of government, the visible symbol of power such as prison, scaffold, and armies will have no existence. There can be no privileges bought or sold, and the transaction kept sac sacred at that point of a bayonet. Every man shall stand on an equal footing with his brother in the race of life, and neither chains of economic thraldom nor menial drags of superstition shall handicap the one to the advantage of the other. So here she's pretty much detailing what she thinks uh, would be possibly a course of action of how things would turn out. She views it as possibly becoming a like a cooperative community because what we do know for a fact is human beings are social creatures and um, they want to be around others and work with others. And majority of people, I'm not going to say everybody. And honestly, I think that's something that just in the process of getting to where we want to be as far as a fully anarchist society, this is something that could be achieved at least on a micro level sooner than that. As far as uh, creating communities, creating, creating co-ops, creating uh, even if you want to do neighborhoods of 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 people, that's, it's like the mutual aid thing, of people working together and helping each other out in, in creating a sustaining community. And, and that's pretty much the main principle of, of all this stuff, that we collectively, we don't need no, we don't need a, a governing body, we don't need no Congress, we don't need no governor, all we need is ourselves, and we have a common goal. Our common goal is survival. Our common goal is, is having a better quality of life than we do now. Everybody has their own gifts, their own trades. Let's work together, and let's support each other in, 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 in accomplishing those goals. And it's, it's just simple as that. Property will lose a certain attribute which sanctifies it now. The absolute ownership of it, quote, the right to use or abuse, will be abolished and possession use will be the only title. It will be seen how impossible it would be for one person to, quote, own a million acres of land without a title deed backed by a government ready to protect the title at all hazards, even to the loss of thousands of lives. He could not use the million acres himself, nor could he wrest from its depths the possible resources it contained. People have become so used to seeing the evidence of authority on every hand that most of them honestly believe they would go utterly to the bad if it were not for the policeman's club or the soldier's bayonet. Be but the anarchist says... Remove these evidences of brute force and let man feel the revivifying influences of self-responsibility and self-control and see how he will respond to these better influences. 
The belief in the literal place of torment has nearly melted away, and instead of the direful results predicted, we have a higher and truer standard of manhood and womanhood. People do not care to go to the bed when they find they can as well can, they can as well as not. Individuals are unconscious of their own motives in doing good. While acting out their natures according to their surroundings and conditions, they still believe they are being kept in the right path by some outside power, some restraint thrown around them by church or state. So the objector believes that with the right to rebel and secede sacred to him, he would forever be rebelling and seceding, thereby creating constant confusion and turmoil. I want to go back to this. I, I just love this part because I, I feel like Lucy was, was preaching at this part. Because, OMG, do we still not think we've been so brainwashed? Good Lord. We know these things. And everybody knows it. It's, it's got to be the co a cognitive dissonance or something. We know for a fact these rich people don't need three and four houses on acres and acres of land, don't need four and five boats, it's only one person. Why you need ten bedrooms, it's just you and your side chick. Why do you need all that? You don't need it. You don't need it. But we've been so brainwashed to think that, well, it's their money. They can do whatever they want. It's their money. They can do whatever. They earned the money. First of all, they didn't. Secondly, coincidentally, these people are also the same people that are so pro-police, so pro-military, so pro-voting. Why? Because the police and the military are the people that are protecting their assets. If if somebody breaks into Jeff Bezos' house, however, whatever way they could possibly do that, the police will be there in 0 0.2 seconds. If somebody breaks into your house, if you ever had that happen, how long did it take the police to get to your house? And what did they do when when they when they did break in there? And 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 how much effort did they put into finding the people? Did they ever find the people when somebody broke into your car? When somebody stole your wallet? Did they even put in effort to make uh, to barely make a police report? Did they ever call you back? The police are not here for us. I was watching the Tinder swindler. I know everybody's seen that. How in the world that man was able to scam all them women through all that money, they go to the police and it's like nothing. But as soon as they found that guy was forging government, uh, the passports or whatever, I'll throw that man in jail, even though it went for long. But that was that they could throw him in jail for. But him swindling these women out of millions of dollars, nothing. The man is walking around free. And that's that's a common thing. We got to think about that when when we we have this knee jerk reaction, like she was talking about. It's that religion thing that says that there's something evil inside of you that is always trying to get out. You need Jesus. You need the Holy Spirit to help you contain yourself and not allow the the realness of yourself get out. And in in the real world, you need the police officers and the military and the FBI and the CIA to protect you from yourself and your own people because they are y'all are wild animals and with no self control. Yada yada yada. But ultimately, they only tell you that so that you can continue to fall in line. And yes, yes, let's not, let's not, let's not be uh, unrealistic. Let's not live in the real world. Yes, there are dangerous people out there. Yes, there are people that are causing harm to people every day. But does the, do the police officers, out of all the cases... Out of all the women that have been abused, out of all the people that have been shot and killed, all the children, how many of those cases have been solved? How many of those people have received quote-unquote justice? Exactly. Yet they keep pushing it. You need the police. You need the police. You need the police. The police ain't doing nothing now. And then something else. Now I'm getting on this rant thing. 
I have seen people from Memphis, Tennessee. Okay, we'll talk about the stats, if they're accurate or not. Memphis, Tennessee, according to the stats, is one of the most dangerous cities in America. Now, I can tell you this. People getting shot and killed every day. Babies. Just standing in places and, and getting shot and killed in drive-bys. Every day. Every day, people are losing their lives. We live in constant fear of our lives. Every day. And we talk about it. We say it's dangerous. Yada, yada. I saw people from Memphis who live this life, or have, say they stand up at night because they, they're afraid that Putin finna send some nukes our way. They, they can't sleep because they're afraid it's finna be a World War Three and, and we're going to get bombs and stuff. Baby, you living in the you living in the world war right now. Whether it's with the police coming and terrorizing, whether it's with other people coming and shooting around, like how how do you let the media or whatever it is like skew your mind to not even view your own your own situation as a war zone? The the poverty. Not not view that extreme poverty as, as extreme state violence. The the over police uh surveillance as extreme state violence as your failing schools, your kids going into schools with black mold and in uh coronavirus and and barely have books as state violence. You don't view that as that because the government says that's not legitimate. That you just should expect that. But what's, what's going on over here in Ukraine, what's going on over here in Iraq, that is the real stuff. You may be able to actually see similar, similar situations going on in your own neighborhood, but no, 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 no. Everything's good there because you have the police. And we need the military over there to help them with that. The police ain't helping us with our stuff. So that just goes into just the, the propagandizing, and even us ourselves can fall into the okie doke. And, and start believing this stuff. When ultimately, you have to, we have to understand this. And that's why we'll be like, why ain't this person go to jail? Why ain't this person get justice? Why ain't this person, were these people working class people? Do these people have any power? Do they have any connects to power? If not, it's a rare chance they gonna get quote unquote justice. It's a rare chance people even gonna lift a finger. I'm sorry. And that's just, that's, that is America. And this, they tell you, we need. They tell you without the police, things would just go terribly. Memphis, Tennessee, after the George Floyd thing, we literally had the FBI come to Memphis for whatever reason. Well, nobody even doing that, really. With the gang unit, they had operations, something or the other. They had uh, shields, electric, electromagnetic shields and everything. They invested millions and millions of dollars in the FBI and the police force back then. How long ago was that? And now the, 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 the murder rate and the crime in Memphis actually increased. That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. And the thing is, we know, like, even if we start with children, we talk about this all the time. Majority of the time, why children... They bully, they act out, they... I'm not talking about regular things children do, being hyper, talking, laughing. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about hurting people, bullying, hitting, fighting, being negative towards people. The majority of the time, it's because they have something else going on, and they do not know how to process that emotion, and therefore, they're doing whatever it is that makes them feel good what helps them relieve that emotion in any way or helps them cope with that emotion so if we know on the the little on the little baby level that's how babies work that's how children work we also know that's how adults work we know that nothing happens in a vacuum we know that yes there are some people that do have uh clinical diagnoses of, of being sociopaths or whatever. But even then, that doesn't mean those people are just going to go out and, and just start hurting and murdering people or whatever. Like, there are things that can be done. 
there are things that can be done if we actually lived in a society that values human beings, that values people, that values helping one another, that values, that literally values humans instead of money. Think about it for a second. If America was like, forget money, forget profit, forget any of that. What can we do to help the people in our country that are suffering? Not saying this is a magic pill. Not saying every single one of the ills of the world would be solved. But God, by golly, would be on the right track. If we actually invested in people's mental health, helping them with that. Not only that, gave people a better quality of life. Make sure people are living in situations that are pleasant, that they want to live in, that people have time to rest, that people have good food to eat, that people have good quality clothes to wear, that people aren't stressed out by uh, paying bills or health insurance and stuff like that. That alone could help deal with some of the issues we got right now with, with people feeling so hopeless and helpless and powerless that the only way they feel they can cope with that is to oppress and hurt other people. But again, no, we don't need that. Mm -mm, we don't need to invest in that. Y'all don't need no money. Y'all don't need uh, no health care. Y'all don't need therapists. Y'all don't need medicine. You need a force with guns. Setting up in your neighborhood and waiting for something to happen. That's my thing. Waiting for it to happen. Letting it escalate. And then escalating it some more and throwing y'all in jail. That is the solution to America. Just keep complying and just keep going with the flow. So, yeah, I, I went on a rant though. But that, but that is such a vital principle to remember when it comes to anarchism. We do not need these things. We don't need these things. And people say you need, well, you need some uh, 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 army. You need a this. You need a that. Okay, you might need protection. You might need people that, well, uh, if somebody's coming and, and trying to hurt you, of course, in any neighborhood, somebody's coming and trying to hurt you, you need people to be able to stand up and, and defend said thing. But as far as just in just being there to just force people to do things, being there to make sure people uh, don't buck up to the system, to make sure people don't speak up when they see something going wrong. Like, that's, that's not the way that a society should run. That's not the way that the world should run. But, uh, yeah, guys, um, that was part two. We got a lot more to read. Um, we'll come back with it next week. But let me know what y'all thought about this, uh, passage so far. I'm really enjoying it. I'm really liking it. Um, it's definitely opening up my eyes some more. And, uh, y'all just tell me what y'all learned. All right, guys, so this has been Gabby. And you can contact us at Building RPWR if you would like. Uh, hit KT up at KT Does Art. Hit me up at Gabby's Music. If you would like to donate to what we got going on, you can do that. Link will be in the description. Thank you guys so much for listening, and I'm out. <laughs>